Hey there, so you're done producing your beats. Let me show you how to mix your beats so that it sounds good on any platform. Now in this tutorial, I'll be using mostly stock plugins, but I may incorporate some third-party plugins, but what matters is that you get the concept and you try to follow along. And the reason why I rendered my project files into audio is so that most people can follow along, even if you use a different door. But if you still have your sounds in MIDI or as loops, it's okay, you can still follow along. It doesn't really change the quality that much. So this is just me trying to make this tutorial more accessible to other users other than FL Studio. So in my playlist, you can see I have my drum section at the top. I have my sound effects, my rolls, my risers right here. Then I have my melodies right here. Okay. So this is important for you to organize your session so that your mixing doesn't take you so much time. Because when your tracks are all over the place, trust me, it's going to get you confused when you're mixing. So I'm going to start with the drums. I always recommend you start with the drums when you're mixing. And to be more specific, the kick. And don't forget to set your tempo. Let's set our tempo to 130 BPM because that's the tempo of this song. All right, so now that I said, I'm going to link this to the mixer, mute everything else, especially here. Then I'll link this to the mixer. Let's detach the mixer so it doesn't keep going away. All right, so we have our kick. First I'm going to do is use an EQ, come right here for the parametric EQ. And then I'm going to shave up some frequency now, usually between 20 to 40 Hertz. We have to be careful with how much you cut. So let's start with about 20 Hertz. We don't want to lose too much low end information. So let's start with about 20 something Hertz. Always do an A-B test before and after. Let's just take it to about 30 Hertz just to be safe. So now it's natural that you lose a little bit of bass when you're mixing. It's totally fine, okay? It's not going to be as heavy as the raw file, but it's going to be much cleaner and more detailed. So we have that, the kick stay in center. And then next, what we're going to do is go to the most recurring sound, which is usually the rim shot or snare, depending on what genre you're producing. I'm going to link this to a second insert. Bring it all the way down and bring it up gradually to you, like the volume. Nice, I like that there. Now, it doesn't have to be a huge difference. And what you find out is that when you adjust the volumes up and down, it would help reveal the true volume at where it should be at, okay? So next, I'm going to use an EQ again and then sweep across the unwanted frequency. Basically, any sounds that has unnecessary low end, you want to take it out so you have more clarity in your beats, okay? And be careful so I don't cut so much that your sounds becomes thin. So whenever I hear a change, I simply back off. Then I come to the next sound. Let's see. We have a percussion. Let's also EQ that. But I want the percussion to be a little bit more present. I'm going to use saturation and I'll use fruity fast distort. That is too much. I'm going to reduce the mix a bit, reduce the threshold, and also reduce the post. All right, so I have that going for me. The next thing I'm going to do is come to this. Link it here, EQ, now we have two percussion sounds, we need to pan them in opposite direction, okay, now how wide should you pan, this totally depends on you, you could pan really wide or you can pan narrow depending on how detailed your drums are, if you have a lot of drum sounds, I recommend you pan wide so that there's more space in your drums, but if your drums are minimal and simple, do not pan too wide, maybe 20 to 30 percent max, but if you have a wide drum, you can go up to like 40, 50 percent, even more, okay, so let's have this here. So this loop right here has a rim shot and some percussions. So I'm going to pan that in accordance with my other rim shot. But first, let's bring down the volume. Okay. 
pan it slightly to the right we don't want to go too wide because this is a whole loop so if i take it too far out it's going to move all the instruments that way so we don't want to move it too far out okay again this is not a rule it's just a guide move this here as well all right so I think that's pretty much it for our main drum sounds. Now we're going to create a drum boss. A drum boss or a boss is just basically a insert that controls all the other elements. So when you apply an effect on the boss, it affects all the other elements. So I'm going to highlight an empty insert, then hold Control Shift on Windows or Command Shift on Mac and simply sweep across, then come to the empty insert again, track crossing, create sub mix. I can just name this drum boss so you can see that all the sounds are now sent into the drum boss so when i turn it off everything goes off now why is this important because there are some effects we're going to apply that we need to affect all the sounds because if we're going to apply them individually it's going to waste time and some cpu resources so and again when we apply the effect as a group it makes it sound more cohesive okay so i'm going to come right here i'm going to load up transient processor it's a stock plugin in fl studio all this does that it makes your drum sound a little bit more punchy okay and you can make it sound soft if you want to sound soft for example here how it sounds you can hear the kick hitting right now let me make it soft You see, it sounds a bit soft and watch me make it hard. So if you want to make your drums, you know, sound like it's smacking or hitting hard, I recommend you use this plugin and you mess around with it. You can even play with the drive to some saturation. Let's reduce the volume of the kick a little bit. Then let's add a compressor. I'm going to be using a third party compressor here. You can use any boss compressor. So I'm going to be using LA76 compressor because of how sharp it is with drums. Again, this is just a taste thing, not like you have to use this. You can use any boss compressor, really. When I turn it off, when I turn it on, you see how glued it sound, right? It glues everything together and makes it sound more cohesive. If you don't like how cohesive it sounds, you can simply either relax the gain reduction or you can just do without the compressor, okay? You don't always have to use a bus compressor on your drums, but I recommend it because it gives it that cohesive, gluey feel. So let's move on to the melodies. I like working on sound effects last so that, you know, it really fits into the beats. So let's move on to chords, the main chord of the song. Another good thing with boss processors is I can simply reduce the drums from here. Then link the chord here. And then I think there's a chord layer in here. So I'm going to also turn this on. Then link it here. I'm going to pan it in opposite direction because they are playing the same rhythm. Now you can pan similar sounds in opposite direction or different sounds that play similar rhythm. Okay. Anything that makes them feel kind of connected opposite direction. So... Again, we'll bring down the volume. Yes, I like that level. Now let's move on to the next sound. We're going to EQ them shortly, but we're going to do it a bit different from how we did the drums. So that's an ambient melody, so we'll leave that there. Then let's move on to the next sound.
pan this here. Typically, I recommend you pan your ambient melodies that sounds like in the background. I recommend you pan them out wide so that it makes the beat feel wider and, you know, just give you that immersive feel. Now, I recommend pads stay in the middle. But if you have like a pad layer, you can pan it left and right. Or if your chord kind of feels like a pad, then you can pan your pad to balance out your chord. Okay, but from what I'm hearing, I don't hear any sound that kind of feels or imitates a pad. So I'll leave it in the center. I like to work on bass as one of the last things. That's why I'm pushing the bass down. So I'll come back to the bass. Let's see what's here. This is another ambient. So if you see this ambient right here and this pad, so I can pan them in opposite direction. So. So I'll leave that vocal in the center because the vocal feels like it's moving between left and right ear. It feels really wide. So I'll leave it in the center. I'm not going to move it. I don't want to mess with that vibe going on. So this is an empty insert. I guess it's time for bass. Then we'll link that. Now, remember I talked about how we're going to EQ the melodies. Now, let's create a boss for the melodies except for the bass. So, we're going to hold Control and Shift as usual. The right click, try crowding, then create submix melody boss. They were simply going to apply an EQ. Now, the reason why we didn't EQ the melody one by one, which of course you can do, is I don't want the melody to feel too clean. I want it to feel a bit more full as well, okay? To feel like there's still some energy left to it, okay? I don't want to be as clean as the drums. So, to come right here and then just sweep. Now, you don't always have to sidechain your bass because I can hear the kick cutting through the bass. The times I recommend you sidechain is if maybe you just want that sidechain effect going on, like you like how it sounds. Now, that's a production technique. But for mixing reasons, if you want to sidechain, it should be that maybe because the bass is overshadowing the kick and you want the kick to cut through, so you sidechain. But for now, I don't think I hear problems. So I'm going to simply reduce the volume and bring it up. Then we'll come to the next base. We'll link that as well. Now, if you notice, this base is not so obvious. So, it wants to be a little bit more obvious. I'm going to add a saturation plugin. Then we're going to reduce the post. Yeah. So, now let's EQ the first base. Now for bass, just like the kick, I recommend between 20 to 40 heads, okay? But you have to listen and make sure whatever you're cutting out does not mess up the vibe of the song. Then we're going to add a log drum. So I want the log drum to have more punch to it. So I'm going to come right here, pretty fast distort again. 
You can hear how heavy that is. It can reduce the post. Now we're going to come to this sound effect. Now the thing with sound effects is that you don't want to do too much, okay? Because one, they do not stay long enough to really make any serious change. So I'm going to come right here and just balance the volumes and maybe worst case pan them. But I don't think I'll be using an EQ for it. So we have that. Use that volume. Just like that, we've mixed our beats. So now let's hear the before and after of the mix, okay? So this is the before. Then this is the after. So you can see that I didn't mess the producer's idea too much, right? I just cleaned the track up, made it more open, and made it more refined, okay? And that is one thing you need to also remember when you are mixing your tracks. It's not the time for you to continue producing, okay? It's a time for you to focus on how to just make the track sound more refined and polished. So that's what I did here. But if you notice, again, the before track had a lot of bass pumping and it's not as clear as the mix. So that's the basic difference. Even the mix sound more balanced. You can hear how the elements are moving. The drums is not as focused in the dead center like the unmix. The unmix really has the drums hitting you from the dead center while the mix has the drums a bit more open, more spread out. It feels like you can walk into it and what that means is that when you have vocals sitting on this beat, it's going to be really easy for vocals to just sit on it without doing too much processing. Yeah, unlike this guy where, you know, you really have to do some surgical EQ to get vocals to sit properly in the beat. And that's pretty much how to mix your beat. So I generally do not recommend you mastering your beat, but if for whatever reason you want to master it and release on streaming platforms, I recommend you export it first, but for the sake of time, you can just come to the master, which has moved exported it, okay? And then you can use a limiter. I recommend you use FabFilters L2 or Isotopes Maximizer plugin. So you simply raise this up and then you simply set your true peak to a negative, okay? So it doesn't clip on streaming platforms or other digital platforms to... So if your goal is digital platforms, I recommend you try to get between minus 8 to minus 10 or even minus 11. And you always want to be on the negative. So for us to get to minus 8 or minus 10, we're going to come here and raise this up some more. that's pretty much how to mix and master your beats in fl studio if you found this helpful like and follow for more